where my help where is my help to come from but my help comes from the lord well that's the kind of idea that that the people would go to these high places and hills and they would seek some sense of connectivity with the deity and so this is that kind of place so you see the bedrock here is of this this um immoral um worshiping of some uh 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 a corrupt Lord, some corrupt God, and then on top of that, you see there's a, another God, which is called Panis, and then you move on to just the next one, you see that Herod the Great put together this, this tribute there uh, to, to, set, to Caesar, and so there's a worship there to the idols of the world, leaders of the world, government officials, if you will whereby there is another layer of worship corruption going on in this place. Later on, after the fall of Jerusalem, um, there were another thing that happened there. Um, Jewish believers, Jewish folks, were killed there as Jerusalem was um, brought down. Look at the corruption. Look at the decay around. Now, you might say, well, that could be the streets of New York. It could be the streets of the mall. It could be your street. It could be anywhere where there is a whole sense of layers of confusion about what God is all about and which God is which God and which one has authority. So Peter asks in this situation, who do people, or God, Jesus says in this situation, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others even Jeremiah, the suffering prophet. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? am. Who do you say that Jesus is in your life? Do you get your information from YouTube? Do you get your information from a pastor that is proclaiming that Jesus is Lord of his life? Do you get your information from others horizontally around you that says that Jesus is worth his weight in gold? Do you get your information on who this Jesus is from the authority of Scripture? Where are you getting the definition of who Jesus is for your life? May it be your wife, your children, your friends, your pastor, people around you, your small group, or are you getting something from the scriptures that identifies who this Jesus actually is? History has had all kinds of uh, different things that are going on in this. And so we see this, that it was associated with shrines, a temple to Caesar, uh, where Roman destroyers in Jerusalem had celebrated their victory, killing other folks. So we're going to go on just a little bit. In history, there's a place where there's been a definitions that have gone on about who Jesus is. And these, these questions throughout history have come up. You have Arianism. He, there, the definition says that there was when he was not, Jesus was not the co-eternal son of the Father, and he was the only an intermediary between the creator and creation. That he's only an intermediary kind of uh, mouthpiece, if you will, uh, for the creator and creation. And Jehovah's Witness, that's where they kind of come up with that. Um, they don't see him as the son of the living God as we do. We go on a little bit further, we see the Ebonites, and they denied that Jesus was God in the flesh. And they taught that he was created at one point, and then he was adopted by God um, at the time of his baptism. And Jesus was the son of Joseph and Mary. He was the Messiah, but he was not divine. So this is another piece of, 
uh, abrogation of who Jesus is and was, and that's where the Mormons find that definition. We're going to go on just a little bit further. There's subordination, and in this there is Christ as a divine being, somewhat below the highest divine principle. The Son is not equal and um, is not eternal and not equal to the Father in being and attributes. So he's, he's below who God is. All right? Then there's the Chalcedonian definition, which is the, the definition of Christianity, who says who Jesus is, and we, we claim that in the Nicene Creed, quite honestly, and that says that uh, Jesus, uh, the Christ, is one. He has two natures preserved in one person and one substance. Both natures are unimpaired, perfect, consubstantial with God and man. They're all together in the same being and essence. And Christ was both preexistent and born of the virgin. Um, Christ is eternal and dies on the cross. And this is the essence of the scriptural foundation of who Jesus is for Christians. That Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was God and with God and through all things were made. You can go back if you would. Thank you. Um, and that he was with in creation. He was there the whole time. He came down from the celestial staircase, entered human history, born the Virgin Mary. He was on earth, walked earth, died, crucified for your sins and my sins. That our sins were washed away by his death on the cross that he was buried, placed in the depths of the earth, in the tomb, and then three days later was resurrected as the Son of God. So there's lots and lots of definitions of who Jesus is. And the question that we've got to ask ourselves today, who in the world is this guy? For me, I need to say that familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity with Jesus kind of breeds a, a sense of lackadaisical nature for myself. I, I, that's a confession of your, of your priest and your pastor. You know, I hang out with Jesus all day long. He's, he's with me when I get up. He's with me when I go to bed. He's with me through the night. I'm hanging out with him all the time. But if I'm not constantly encountering the risen Lord through scripture, uh, through encounters with him who, who shows himself to be mighty in my life, if I just kind of go with the complacent, non-existent, that he's just kind of there, boy, I could just get kind of lackadaisical. What about you? What about you? passage in this piece of scripture that goes on and it says and Jesus answered him blessed are you Simon bar Jonah son of Jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father Peter had the vantage point that we all wish we could have had. To walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, have him reach out his hands as he was bubbling down in the midst of the ocean, as he's bubbling down in the water. But that experience wasn't enough. Look at the piece of scripture that I just read. And it says, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. So walking with Jesus and talking with Jesus didn't really show Peter, quite honestly, who this Jesus was all about. 
It was the very Spirit of God defining and filling Peter as he saw these things and experienced these things. It was the Spirit of God that interpreted for him who this Jesus is. Wow. Wow. That God himself was involved in the divine revelation to Peter, speaking and showing and convincing Peter moment by moment who this Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of the living God, was all about. Many of you are going to be involved in small groups and you're involved in relationships where you're having these horizontal conversations about your Jesus moments and places where you're seeing the living God move and breathe and actuate himself throughout all of creation. You're having those horizontal relationships. But there's something else that's absolutely primary to our understanding of who this Jesus Christ is. And that's the scriptures. For the relationships that we have on our horizontal axis are, are, are good testimony, if you will, to the living God. But as we're reading the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is coming down and informing those scriptures which is bouncing off the page and reflecting to us the ideal, ideology, the power, the indications of who this Jesus Christ is and was and will be forever. That's where you and I have the profound advantage, believe it or not, over the disciples. write that down. We have an advantage over the disciples that the Holy Spirit is moving and wafting through the scriptures to inform you and I of the power that Jesus has to change our lives and the lives around us. For Jesus says, even you will do greater things than these. Whoa, doggy. That even you in the pews today will do greater things than the disciples did. And it is because of this enormous revelation that comes to us through the scriptures. Take a look at this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. You can write that down to make sure I got it right. The natural person, and I put in flesh and blood, that's my definition of natural person. The natural person, flesh and blood, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he does not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. That literally, we have to receive the presence of the Spirit in our lives in order to understand, to be filled, to grasp the enormity of who this Jesus is. Are you asking God to fill you with his presence so that as you read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the scriptures, that you may know the power of Jesus' name in your own life and proclaim his glory unto the ends of the earth. So you and I have a task at hand today. And the task at hand today is to open our eyes to clearly see 
what is the real what the reality is there to open our eyes to see what the reality is there in the scriptures that speak to us to define the clarity of who Jesus is in your life question for you now where's your bible did i actually say that and when was the last time you walked in through the pages to allow the holy spirit to bathe you in god's identity just kind of wonder today why your priest, pastor, friend, or enemy that I might be for you today is preaching this sermon because it is paramount to your spiritual nurture that you and I are involved in the word of God through small group relationships so that we may grow deeper and deeper in the knowledge and love of God in Christ Jesus. So that we are not wafted to and fro by senseless definitions of the Son of the living God. So who do you say is that Jesus is? A prophet? priest, victim, moral agent, or the Son of God. But when you exit this place today, you will be in a place in a world that is much more corrupt than Caesarea of Philippi. And you and I will need to know who he is power that Jesus is as we wade through the ambiguity.